Hello to all the listeners and watchers. Uh, my name is Ezri Tarazi, and I'm going to talk about deep design and how actually design can enable healing. And the reason for this title is that one, I think that design should go into the deep. And the second is that I don't believe that design can heal. Because from the parameters of design, there is no way to heal. The way to heal is the way healing in the body is working, which is enabling the body to heal itself. And our culture cannot heal what is going on now. Uh, our culture need to really transform. And design is part of our culture, where it was based on designers. So it was design, designers centered design. It moved into human centered design. And we need to shift and make it upside down. And I'm going to talk about it in this presentation. The first work I want to show uh, is something that happened in 2005 toward the exhibition in the MoMA, Safe Design Takes on Risk. And in many cases, as we know, and I think this conference, unique conference and unique series of conferences, about hope is leading something which is prophetic and i think that design when it moves out of the way and enable it can be prophetic in that sense paula antonelli in 2005 was opening something that wasn't in the focus of design community which was about safety and quite Shocking to myself during the last two years, what I showed in this uh, exhibition became relevant only much longer time. The idea was to embed into fashion filters, EPA filters. So when you go uh, toward the crowded area, it will be embedded in your, in your body garments, such as this turtleneck. And actually, at that time, I also created a whole exhibition about protecting the head. It was called head guard. So you see the final object uh, as filters embedded into fashion. So fashion will support safety. And this was the lousy picture I took from the opening. And another prophetic exhibition I was, had the privilege to participate was Design for a Living World. Uh, happened in the Kupiyuit National Design Museum, curated by Ellen Lupton. And at the time, they asked us to deliver visions into the future about the combination of sustainability and living. And at that moment, I, I was using the largest bamboo shoots on Earth, which is something that uh, is quite high. It's like 15 meters, 20 meters height. And you see the large size of pipes, bamboo pipes embedded into furnitures. And the vision of sustainable materials was in this as a kind of a way uh, to illustrate the need of designers to move into awareness, conscious awareness about sustainability. So you can see here the flute-like speakers or the ping pong balls as in the light. 
So this kind of uh, vision of nothing else at home, everything is embedded into the poles, uh, speak about very minimalistic way of living. This is the library, for example, opened at the pages I read, and that's it. This is the living room, only few uh, things that the person needs, including wine, of course. <laughs> and the media center that will be actually integrating everything inside in a remote way. Another uh, project that was profiting the future was a 2003 table that was named New Baghdad. Before the entrance of the airlines into Iraq at the time, later on manufactured by a company called Edra, and it was showing the future of Iraq manifested in the visuals of aluminum profiles meticulously uh, grained into the map or welded into the map of Iraq as a symbol of a very, very difficult task. And the show tried to say it's going to be as difficult as welding aluminum. Um, new Baghdad as the efforts to create something totally new without understanding the deep culture, the complexity. So in that sense, uh, a prophet like Kli is now touching the thing about hope. And I think it's because uh, there is less hope. This ex exhibition called uh, Kalab was saying that in our homes, we will, we will see war. So I created this kind of uh, leftovers overs from uh, ammunition, furnitures. Uh, so you see the ammunition numbers on the wood and I created this sofa. Uh, the last project I want to show in this series is uh, a way to create homes very cheaply, very easily to build by the family itself at the time made in the Babushe Vitra Museum garden using a modular system for storage houses in the garden uh, to to help families of refugees to build their homes with a much better isolation and much better noise cancellation and other things, and mainly to create a sense of home using local mud on a very simple and cheap recycled plastic. Uh, and you can see the results here. Later on, uh, south of Syria and the north of Jordan became a over a million people, refugees that still are there, living in tents. And in the double cost of a tent, you can have your own home. Uh, another project was Mabul. Mabul is the flood, the biblical flood was shown in a booth in uh, San Paulo. And the idea that right now we are in an electrical flood, not the rain physical, but the flood of uh, information. But actually, <laughs> uh, 12 years later, I could see that we have also floods, as we saw in the last summer and winter in Europe and elsewhere. Uh, other project was dealing with uh, solar energy, combined heat and power, and recycled plastic used for uh, creating a much faster uh, things to, for the garden. Now, into the subject of deep design, I would say that designers-centered design 
looks like this. If uh, the top line is the surface of the water, so the designers goes into the shallow water, jump out, and create a, as high as it can, a jump with a lot of fireworks into the PR, showing its uh, concepts as fast as it can, and then create a buzz over the work, even if it's not even half baked, but let's say one tenth baked. And you have all the websites that will uh, promote this kind of uh, shallow design concepts. And for many years, I have to admit that I was in this game. I was doing this uh, shallow water dip uh, very fast ascent and then going up into the fireworks of making it public, going to all design affairs, design weeks around the world, including the huge events in Milan. Now, the other approach that I think the future of design need to promote is deep design. And as a, a research diver, I know the risk of going very deep into and enter uh, the deep water. You need to really know what you're doing when you are in the deep. You need to take into account everything from the mix of gases that in your tanks, into the time, into the depth, into the calculations of depth, into the calculation of the amount of gas you carry with you, decompression, and all kinds of things that a diver needs to take into account, including being neutral in the column of the water. So it's becoming very exacting, very precise dive when you go into the deep dive of design. Now remember in IDO where we say, Let's go and have a deep dive, and it was like a three days, very quick thing when we call it deep dive. And right now, what I want to promote in your consciousness is the need of designers to go also to the deep dive uh, and enable by design the healing that is needed. It's the upside down way of what design right now needs. And the reason is because we don't have more time to play. The previous time was playing and having fun. And we had the old time of, in our life to do it. And our pursuit to fame, our pursuit to create a kind of a one-time shot is now over, sorry. Uh, now, I think that in in this phase, designers underestimate what they have to bring into the deep design process. They underestimate it because they never meet the deep design in a serious way, unless they are really into a project for a length of time and a length of interaction with other people. So those designers, who really face deep design know that there are a lot, a lot of ingredients uh, to deal with. And it's to do with uh, the view of making a sustainable object, which is now at least 40 years of practice. But there is a new uh, way to pursue in design and it's to collaborate with science toward the challenges that we face right now. And I will say it again, we moved from designers center design to human center design by instead of doing the bright and beautiful designs, we also listen to the users. So we are in the last 35 years or 30 years into human-centered design, which like taking the focus from yourself as a 
designer to the user and listen to the user by empathy, by other things, and enable technology to become more prominent into the use of users. But I think this is gone over the cliff right now. And we are now in a situation where no more the human can be in the center. It, can, it need to move into nature center design. And I will give one example for my practice as a researchers, researcher in the Technion, uh, where I built Design Tech Lab. So you see here an article I wrote a few years ago about nature center design. And it was dealing with how design can support science to explore ways to restore coral reef. Um, in the lab, we have various tools that are unique, like a huge, not huge, but very large ceramic printer and other printers that are really can create one meter by square meter of stuff, uh, including uh, bioplastic and ceramic. And you can see here the Delta Wasp. And we have here uh, machines that can take these ceramics and push the ceramics into the machine. And also, of course, a clean to burn it. We use scanners. And the beginning of the research was about scanning a real coral and manipulate its forms, uh, printing it in several materials, including uh, plaster and PLA. Um, and trying that in Elat uh, Research Institute. Um, this was 2018. And of course, we tested the colors with fish in an aquarium, and we found out they like the warm colors of uh, yellow, orange, and red. We installed it for temporary, uh, for a short time of like four months, and we took it out of the water, of course. And we could see that in several occasions of dives, fish could see it as home. We also, uh, we can see eggs on one of the models. We could see other forms of life other than fish. Um, and it encourages us to think later on how can printing can replace a, a degraded a reef or a reef that doesn't exist and we want to build a nuclear of a reef inside a really deserted area. So I will maybe show, this was the, per, the first uh, test that we did, and we could see that the variety of fish and the amount of fish was quite large to the printed corals. And in the red circle, we could see the um, natural corals. Later on, we moved, of course, in all this process, we worked together with a marine biologist that was helping us to, uh, of course, go through these uh, areas and really detect what is in there. We found out that we don't want to use clay we tested several materials and terracotta clay was found as the best. And we started to print in a regular way. This is a research by Ofer Berman, our doctorate level designer. He's working on this project for almost four years. So the first way was to slice the object and print it in the regular way. But we found out it was taking a lot of material and a lot of time, like here, 11 hours. So we moved into path and parametric design using the Z parameter to create this kind of uh, 
chaotic like uh, shape using the parametric design to create several and variety and complex shapes uh, to make home for small, medium, and big uh, creatures underwater. And with the same algorithm, we created a lot of shapes, uh, lowering the time from 12 hours or 26 hours into 20 minutes. And the idea of doing something very fast was to enable a very large experiment underwater. Uh, so you can see the, on the top right the algorithm and um, the shape that is done by using the flow of the Z uh, vertical uh, using a fast uh, way of printing. And this is the variety, and variety is important in nature. We cannot mold one type of thing and duplicate it in nature. Nature do doesn't duplicate things exact. It has a variety, it has a complexity that molds doesn't give us. And this was the reason to go into these uh, algorithms. Uh, this was the first experiment uh, floating the things in the column of the water and to see whether planulas, which is a coral's eggs stuck into it. So you can see it here. And we also make a small blip into uh, up, up into the public, uh, created uh, by Eric Chen, an uh, exhibition in the Holon Design Museum in 2019. Uh, the exhibition called Extreme. Uh, here you can see the objects installed in, in, in the water, 15 meters, 12 meters depth uh, on one pole. This was the first pole that we installed. And we of course go and dive there. Uh, uh, some of the marine biologists go and dive every, every week and we are going there every month. And on the right, you can see the first installation picture. And on the left, you see it after a month. Now, you cannot create a test like this only for an exhibition. And I think part of what I show here that I think very few things are going from exhibition to experimentation into the water and continuing the concept into real life. And we can see after like few months that it was populated by small fish. And we continue to dive and to check whether our idea that ceramic can create a nuclei of growth of a reef is right or wrong. I have to say that few marine biologists were saying that we, we are wrong, that it will not happen and it will break very soon. And there was a storm and actually one of the poles, the first pole was tilted as a pizza. And then we collected the three of them together. And you can see on the left, uh, a one year and a half. And on the right, you can see how rich the reef became. And one of the most important things that I want to show here is that you see the plethora of uh, corals here. And corals are, I have to say, to those who doesn't know, corals are a living creature. It looks like a plant, but it's a living creature. And in the center of the slide, you can see the, uh, a very unique phenomena where you can see on an artificial reef, a stone coral, which says that the stone corals was later on Will create, uh, will create the, um, the reef. Uh, up. So it will grow and cover by its growth uh, the ceramic. So when you put your design off the, off the line, you don't care that it will be covered and it will be disappearing uh, under uh, corals. 
I'm saying it instead of I will make the approach of, okay, I will make my beautiful sculpture and put it under water and I will come and clean it from algae every month or so. Or so. This is the opposite approach. So in this approach, we want uh, the natural life uh, to cover it. And you can see this is like two years and a half later. This shots was taken a, a month ago. You can see how it covered. And you can see how in the middle of a sandy ground, fish came. And to the growth, there is a whole ecosystem that built inside it. Really rich. Uh, flora and fauna that covers the, the design. And now I'm going back to how designers can enable this. Uh, marine biologist doesn't have the knowledge to do anything in 3D. He doesn't have the knowledge to print. He doesn't have the knowledge to imagine. He doesn't have the knowledge of materials as designers have. They have, but they don't have it as designers have. So in this project, with the collaboration of the marine biologist, Professor Nadav Shashar and his team, Professor Owen Levy and his team, and other biologists, we could see that uh, the benefits of having designers in the loop was creating something that they never dreamt. They never dreamt that a stone coral will grow in, two, in, in, in some places it grew like in this picture, almost seven centimeters, which is double the size of a regular reef uh, growth. And I think it's because of our attention, <laughs> because our, we put our attention <laughs> into this and we wanted it to grow, so it grew fast. Um, so thank you for listening. And here's the list of people that support this research. It's not that something I do alone. And it's only one of the things we do in this lab, Design Tech Lab, which is a, in a demonstration to what I said before. Uh, I think design has to go to these territories of deep design, going to depth into all aspects of what their design is doing, making, for the future. And the second phase of it is actually not only creating more conscious products, more conscious uh, design from the overlook of materials, shipment, whatever, but also to create objects that will support the way nature heals itself. Because only nature can heal. We designers can only enable it or not. Thank you.